With your CIG TV News update, I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining me. We begin with news on a planned 2020 census. Cabinet recently approved the planning of the census, which counts the Cayman Islands population and the number of households. Now, the Economics and Statistics Office, which conducts the census, has now set up a census advisory committee. And the first meeting was held last week, exactly two years out from when the census will happen in 2020. The ESO committee comprises 20 resource persons representing all three islands and from different branches of the public sector, as well as the non-governmental agencies, such as the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. Now, the committee will inform and advise the ESO in planning for the census in October of 2020. This will include helping with the finalization of the census questionnaire, such as new questions that may be added to the census 2010 questions. Financial Secretary and Chief Officer of the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development, Mr. Kenneth Jefferson underscored the real and practical significance of the census data to all segments of the Cayman Islands community. The 2020 census planning will cover all phases of census preparation, field work implementation, and post field dissemination under three subcommittees for mapping, logistics, and training, as well as publicity. Well, Speaker of the House, Dr. The Honorable Makiva Bush is in London this week representing the Cayman Islands branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Uh, also attending the 150th International Meeting of the Royal Commonwealth Society is Cayman branch chairman Dr. Lemuel Hurlston, who actually nominated the Speaker to represent the Cayman Islands at the three-day meeting, which started today at South Africa House in Westminster on different days. During the first two days, the delegates will discuss a better engagement of youth in Royal Commonwealth Society programs which focus strongly on young adults. Additionally, they will receive a presentation on localizing the sustainable development goals and the roles of cities and discuss environmental challenges the Commonwealth countries face. Now, the last day will highlight the society's engagement with Commonwealth citizens. Preparation is key, and staff from the Department of Commerce and Investment are learning all they can about intellectual property law. Yes, today um, what we're focusing on is IP, intellectual property training for the DCI team. There's a number of areas we're focusing on, um, specifically copyrights and trademarks. And what we're looking at today is a three-day training, and today what we're looking at is copyrights 101, trademarks 101. We've also had um, some other government departments join us. We have RCIP, we also have the um, uh, OFREG, um, and General Registry. So uh, overall, it's a government initiative to actually understand our laws better and actually help enforce it. It's definitely going to help us. It's going to make us more efficient. We, um, it's going to help us to understand what sections of the law relate to what offenses. It's also it's going to help us educate the public when they have general questions in terms of what is their containing law and how do we go about enforcing certain sections of the law and what are their rights in the law um, in terms of uh, what rights they have. This week, about 25 participants are attending the three-day workshop. Now, besides learning more about the law and how it will affect their jobs and clients, they were also asked to, uh, able rather, to ask the facilitator questions of concern or possible scenarios which may occur in relation to the intellectual property law. Finally, the Small Business Expo is set to take place this Saturday, October 20th at the Regatta Office Park, Leeward 1 building that's located on West Bay Road. The aim of the expo is to promote the entrepreneurial spirit of local business owners. A press release is reminding attendees that they can take part in presentations and learn from industry experts. Small businesses will be on full display at the upcoming Small Business Expo. The event is hosted by and organized by the Cayman Islands uh, Small Business Association and mainly sponsored by the Ministry of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure, as well as other major private sector sponsors. The expo was created to increase the public awareness of the small and micro businesses on island, as well as to provide an opportunity for small business owners to network and to educate and motivate participants. Minister for Commerce, the Honorable Joseph Hugh, is encouraging everyone to attend the expo, again, which takes place from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. this coming Saturday, October 20th, at the Regatta Office Park on West Bay Road. As always, if you would like to take a look at what's on CIG TV this week, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and click on the publication link at the bottom of the home page. If you missed today's news update, you can get all the details on our Kim and Allen's government Facebook page as well as the CIG television YouTube channel. For now, I'm Donna Bush as always thanking you for watching, wishing you a wonderful and safe night and hoping you'll join me back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now.
Did you know that planning permission is required for an addition, alteration, or any material change to your house? The 10% rule no longer exists. Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the dead bolts are not able to move. If it is slightly open, then you can push the dead bolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be pried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. Did you know that planning permission is required for a shed? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know planning permission is required to clear land by mechanical means? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. <laughs> 